What is good, this is the family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's happening with Tesla Spy and a couple of other tickers. I want to break down what's happening with the overall market moving forward and some very important levels to be watching for. Now the trust look at my personal opinion. But before I break the devil's information, before I talk about some very important levels to be watching for and what's happening with Tesla with this potential bounce that could be coming, let me just mention a couple of things. I'm firstly not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link, which is down below in the description. If you sign up for Weeble and deposit $500, you're guaranteed 20 free stocks. If you deposit $25,000 or more, you're guaranteed 75 of them. And the offer ends very soon in just a couple of weeks. Anyways, Ford Tesla, we're actually holding it very well. We had this range that developed. We had support between this 173 to 174 area and resistance around this 180 area. We've been going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth for about a month. And now we're approaching the shareholder meeting in less than a week from now. So I believe that either as we approach it or when we see uh, the results come out from the votes, Tesla's going to make a very, very big move. So as a reminder, you know, for the short term, there is a potential head and shoulders, but it's not really playing out. Uh, Tesla's actually holding up very well instead of that happening. Now, it looks a lot more probable to play out regardless of if we get a drop or not. So regardless of if, if we get a little dip or not, or if it doesn't happen, the most likely possibility is we do get a big bounce. We're going to see a big push coming very soon. So even if we do get a little drop next week, we could still get a big bounce later on. And we're still holding up very, very well. We have a left shoulder right here on Tesla. <laughs> we have a head down here we have a right shoulder forming and for bullish you want to see it break and close above 180 if that's the if that's the case we're going to easily push into the 200s in my opinion if we lose 173 we turn bearish but overall this chart looks bullish to me looking at the inverse head and shoulders now well tesla's holding up now my opinion could change depending on different factors but as of right now there is upside potential now for the shorter term Tesla is actually trying to fight this resistance around 178. So it's been building some strength, trying to push a little bit higher after seeing a little bit of liquidity grab, I would say yesterday and the day before that, as Tesla dropped to the 173s. But what's good is we held support very well and we're trying to push higher. So I would say Tesla's in a pretty good place. Uh, but right now, we're not really breaking out. We're attempting to balance, but we're not really getting a big breakout yet. We're still stuck in the range. So we have 178 as resistance, 176 as one support, so we also have 173. Otherwise, we're just kind of trading sideways for now. We'll have to give Tesla some time. Now for SPY, we're in a very, very interesting phase. SPY has been on a very, very nice uptrend. But as you guys can see with this trend line, SPY kind of bounced off of it. We pushed all the way up to a new all-time high around 536, and we're still holding up, so we still favor the bulls. Uh, if we end up losing 534, I'll be looking for a potential touch of this trend line. Depending on how long it takes, we could get back to the 533s. If we do lose that, I'll be looking at 532.5 and 531.5 as supports. But as long as we close or hold above this white trend line right here, see so the line right here, we're going to favor the bulls over the bears. That's my personal opinion based on how this is looking. This is based off what the trend is telling us. To be bearish, you want to see SPY basically lose the trend line, close below it, or even close below 531.5, and then we will be dipping more. As long as we hold above it, we still favor the whole buy the dip market as the bulls are stepping in. So for example, today, SPY dipped after the unemployment numbers came out. It dipped all the way down to 531.5, came back up, and we actually opened above the trend line. And then since we, you know, we got bought back up, the buyers defended and pushed us all the way up to a new all-time high. So the buyers are still defending. The buyers are still technically in control as long as SPY is above the trend line, even if we do dip a little bit. So watch support at 534. If we lose this, you know, this trend line could be touched. As long as we're above the trend line, we do favor this whole, like, buy the dip market. SPY is going to bounce, like that kind of stuff. If we lose it, then there could be a little pullback coming. So we'll just have to wait and see. But as of right now, at the time of recording, this SPY is holding up very well within our range, the range between 436 and 434. And we're still above the trend line, so we favor bulls. For NVIDIA, we're also range trading between 1180 and uh, 1200. If we lose 1180, I think there's going to be a, a risk of NVIDIA actually dipping down to fill this gap around 1164. And if we end up holding up, we could be looking for a rebound. But overall, that's all I'm seeing on NVIDIA. I think that for now, we're going to shuffle around the area we're in. We have 1192 as resistance in 1200. We have support at 1180. I think we're going to continue to trade sideways in this range. If we lose 1180, we'll be dipping all the way down to fill this gap. So I do favor that a little bit more, like I said earlier. Uh, but we haven't officially lost this yet. And it may take another few days for that to happen. So we'll just have to give it some time. 
Bitcoin is just trading kind of sideways. We have a range on Bitcoin, 72,000, this range as resistance. Support is currently at 71,182 and 70,962. So we'll just have to see how things go at least moving forward. For the QQQ, we have resistance currently around 465 and we have support where this trend line just happens to be just like that of SPY. So as you guys can see, we're still holding it very well in this trend line. Let me actually try to zoom out a little bit more so you guys can see this. See this big white trend line I have drawn out here. There's a white trend line. This is what the QQQ is holding. We touched this, bounced, touched it, bounced, touched it, bounced. <laughs> excuse me, touched it, bounced. We're still holding up. The QQQ is showing a little bit of weakness thanks to NVIDIA kind of dipping a bit uh, because that's the reason why it's coming down. And now we're approaching this trend line. Uh, there's, there's also other factors, of course, but NVIDIA is just one of the big ones. Watch 462.5 and also this trend line. If we close below this or lose this, there's going to be a risk of this dipping lower all the way down to the lower 460s. If we hold this, we could try to rebound. So I'll be watching this very carefully on a level to level basis. For Apple, we're trading sideways, but there's a little weakness. We hit 196. We have support currently at uh, 194.5 and also at 195. If we lose 195, we'll watch 194.5. If that fails, this will be dipping all the way down to 193.5 in lower levels. We're just kind of trading sideways right over here in this range, but there is a risk of Apple dipping a little bit lower, so watch for that very carefully. For the IWM Russell 2000, we got a little rejection off this 203 zone. We are starting to dip lower. I think that there's key support around 200. So we'll just have to see how things end up looking from here. So that's something worth noting. There's kind of like a head and shoulders here and is kind of dipping on a slight uh, trend right now. So I do see a risk of it dipping down to the lower 200s, if I'm going to be frank and honest. Coinbase hits this 260 area, which is awesome, but it's kind of struggling to really break out from there so we have some tough resistance in the low 260s if we reject we could be looking for a move back down to 257 amazon's trading sideways within its range from 184 to 186 i think there's a risk of it also dipping a bit towards 184 and then continuing to rebound to the lower 184s but overall it's still trading sideways and it still has some strength so it's still holding up well but i think it's going to consolidate meta is also trading sideways around 495 not really doing much if we end up losing uh, basically 493 look for a dip all the way down to 491 then 4888 we have resistance currently at 498 and also 500 as of right now we're just kind of trading sideways there's a possible head and shoulders i'm not really going to count solely on that we're just kind of trading sideways in a range so we have to give this some time and then for the memes gamestop and amc i'd be careful with them because you know these stocks get halted like crazy they're very manipulated uh they expose a lot of things that go on let me just say that if GameStop loses 33.7, it's going to be continuing to fall lower. It's going to be a big sign of weakness. So we're trying to hold this support at our 20 EMA. If we lose it, I think we're going to be dipping all the way down to lower levels. If we hold this, we could try to rebound, but it's looking very weak right now after all these halts. Same thing with AMC. If we lose 5.13, look for a bigger dip. Otherwise, it's going to try to hold up. But I'm just trying to say that there is weakness on these charts. The VIX has dropped quite a bit. We haven't officially filled this gap. Now the VIX is trying to hold support at 12.43. So it's kind of in a very, very critical position. But let me just make it very clear that it's at a very, very low level. And that's the reason why we're seeing the market kind of shuffling. So the market is continuing to shuffle. We have to give it some time. Like I said earlier, as long as we're above some key supports, we are still favoring bulls overall. But this could shift if we end up losing those levels. And then for Tesla, once again, we are continuing to trade sideways within this range. Lose 173, I turn bearish on Tesla. Break 180, I turn more bullish, uh, especially if we hold above those levels or close above them. So give it the time it needs and just know that right now Tesla remains range bound. And it may take some time until we get to the shareholder meeting to get a much better move. All right, so I'll see you guys very soon. Thank you for listening and peace out.